Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Criterion Connection. It's October, so that means we're going to do all horror movies and thrillers this month. I'm Wade. And I'm Joe. And on this spooky edition of Criterion Connection, uh, we are doing a 1955 French film called Diabolique, uh, directed by Henry George Corzo. And it's based on the book, the novel, She Who Was No More. Uh, it's basically a murder thriller, but there's a, lot of, there's a lot of horror elements of the mystery of what happened to the body. Can, can we ask for forgiveness about pronunciation, since neither you or nor I are French scholars? Yes. Um, I don't think we're even Fran- French-like. I'm like, not even French dressing. Yeah. <laughs> That's your one better off dead reference for the day. But it basically involves this guy, Mikel, uh, who basically he runs this school. And he is just trash. He's 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 a very abusive person uh to everyone. Yeah, yes, he, yeah. he is really not the best. He's a Mr. Scrooge. And basically has a wife named Christina. She's very... She has health issues. She has a weak heart, is what yes. they always say. Yes. Uh, and then, but, you know, of course, with this piece of trash, he can't just be seeing one person. He also has a mistress, uh, Nicole, who is... Also a teacher at the school. Like you, this guy's just not good at cheating. But he doesn't care. That's the thing. I know. Is, you know, because his wife, it, it, like that's the whole hush hush. Like I can't believe his wife just lets him go around cheating on on her. You know, in the same school and like all this stuff. And and the school was part of her dowry. Yeah. So like he got it for marrying Christina. Yeah. So it's. So that's going on, but there's uh, something else happened. Valerie, Valerie, goddamn, Nicole and Christina are conspiring together mm-hmm. to murder Mikkel and get rid of him forever, and life can go back to normal. Uh, well, the the idea is they both experience uh, abuse at his hands, and that you know it, it's come to the conclusion that. They, as well as the world, would be better off without him. Yeah. And they conspire together uh, because they they are friends and they're close with one another that they're going to just get rid of him and take over the school themselves. Yeah. And so we spend kind of the first half of the movie setting that up yeah set up uh, to basically drown well, is it, him. yeah is it the first half or is it maybe, maybe it's closer to the first third yeah because it's just like kind of the first act is that um and and then kind of conspiring coming up with this plan to um you know lure him away you know a couple hundred kilometers uh, from from where their school is to a different town, and then they're gonna get him somewhat drunk, but they're more using the alcohol to uh, hide the sedative that they're gonna use and put yeah. him to sleep, and they're gonna use that to help uh, drown him. Yeah, in the bathtub, and yeah, which is the, which is the cover. Yeah. So that kills him, and then they're gonna bring him back and dump him in the swimming pool and make it seem like he got drunk and fell in the swimming pool and drowned. Yes. Uh it's not the worst plan in the world. I mean That's it's actually the... pretty well thought out for the time. Yeah. I mean it's it's pretty well thought out, except there's no corpse the next day in the pool. Well, yeah. The, yeah. So uh, yeah, what ends up happening is they, they go through with all this, they deal with this, you know, the anxiety of pulling this off. Christina tries to back out of it a couple times. Yeah. Um, and 
ultimately goes through with it. And they, you know, almost get caught by the neighbor. But they, you know, convince him, like, to leave it alone. And, like, just let, like, he's just so happy they're leaving that he couldn't care. Yeah. And then the gas station guy almost catches him. So it's just all always like this, almost somebody stumbling into their thing, uh, that the drunk soldier guy, all these near, um, all these near captures for them. They finally make it back to the school. They dump the body in the pool, but it never comes back up. Yeah. And it never seems to get found. Yeah. You know, they have they, they, they manipulate it so a kid dives in. They have you know, the the groundskeeper drain the pool. You know, and and it's just that's when we kinda hit we we hit it's no longer just a thriller. We're now hitting horror elements like Yes. We killed him. Where is his body? Yeah. And, and, like, his suit comes back from the cleaners, the one he was wearing when they killed him. Yeah. Uh, things like that start happening. They start, you know, you know, Christina starts thinking that there's somebody else in, in the school. And all of these things start happening, and it's almost like, you know, uh, like a vengeful ghost kind yeah. of story. Yeah, and also you add in the uh, I believe his name is Alfred, the uh, the private investigator. He yeah. starts sticking his nose, so now you have that extra pressure. It's just the the last like the second uh, the second third and like the last to the third act is very them dealing with the repercussions and the the mystery. The the is it a ghost? Like you know they hear something like the kid was like they saw him. Yeah, it's That's it's cool. it, there's so much paranoia, and you know Christina, who's the one that really was getting cold feet, you know, is now experiencing extreme paranoia. Like, was he dead? Was he not dead? Am I being haunted? Is like there's no body? What happened? Somebody yeah. knows and is trying to blackmail us. You know these kinds of ideas. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Should we reveal what happens? I think we should. I think right now. Because uh, I know in the spirit of the movie, um, I know in, in the old theaters, they would ask people not to tell yes. what happens. Well, luckily, we, with these shows, we have a spoiler warning, which if you don't want to hear about spoilers around right now, I'm going to have a little tag on the time code on when we're done talking about spoilers. So if you haven't seen the movie, go watch it. And come back and watch this and listen for the spoilers. If not, you know, just fast forward to the time code that's listed below. Yeah. So it turns out, um, one night she stumbles in and finds him in the bathtub in the in the school and he stands up, which is haunting. It, it's pretty which is, great. Which is a, an extremely scary thing if you are absorbed into this movie. And she has a heart attack and dies. And it turns out that him and Nicole had conspired the whole time to set up Christina, to put her in this position to scare her to death so yes. they could be together. And also, he would in fully inherit the school. Right. Now, what is brilliant... Is is not just this whole, you know, first the the first scheme, and then the actual scheme, very much like wild things, but you get left with the kid who had the slingshot who said he saw the principal and that's who punished him. He gets his slingshot back and they ask him where did he get it, and it was Christine. Yeah. Or Christina. Yes. Uh, and, and I love that ending. Yeah, because it's like, maybe she, like, they tried, they thought that they, 
got one up on her. Maybe she had a one up on them because ironically or coincidentally, uh, the private investigator was there and mm-hmm. heard them celebrate. And he's like, you guys are going to get 20 years for this. Yeah. And so maybe that was a setup. Maybe he, Alf, maybe Alfred it's, would show up. Yeah. It's such like, it's so layered. Yeah. And, and I, I do like, it, I think that, that last, you know, 20 minutes is, is 20, 30 minutes is just brilliant. Yes. Just brilliant. Like it takes a while to get there and it takes a lot to set up, but man, does, does he stick the landing on those? I feel like tales from the crypt took like this TV show and probably the EC comics took a lot from this movie. Like the idea of like the comeuppance, the, the twists and turns with that. So, like, I feel like, I don't know, man. I've seen I, a couple episodes that are very like this kind of plot. Yeah. And I don't know if it was just something in the water or, or what, or if everybody was inspired by this book or movie, but damn, it, it's, it's so brilliant. I mean, we can, I guess this is the time code. We can say that there's no more spoilers. Yeah. So, to me, like, the the first thing I thought of, and, and Tales from the Crypt is, is such a great reference point, but to me, I think of Wild Things. Okay. Uh, with Kevin Bacon, Matt Dillon, uh, Denise Richards, I believe, is in it. And, because that was always uh, proffered to me as... Oh, this movie's full of all these twists you're not gonna see coming. Yeah. Um. I think this movie pulls it off even better. With with the with the small the, the smaller scale schemes that work extremely well. Yes. And yeah, I've been wanting to watch this movie for a long time, and and I'm not disappointed. Yes, I, I yeah. agree. Like, I saw this a couple years ago, and I guess I forgot a lot of it. I just remember the ending was cool. Uh, and I watched it like, like tw- when I was 23, so that's like seven years later, and it's, now I watch it now with a more seasoned brain, more... Yeah. yeah. So, and, the, so those who... They're going to watch a lot of this movie and be like, this isn't all, this shouldn't be in the spooky horror month. I mean, it's it's light on the horror elements, Yes. Um, it's kind of more of like a supernatural like doubt is yeah. is kind of what happens in the movie that, that kind of leans it into that territory because otherwise it's very much a thriller movie, like a psychological thriller. Yes. And it's Yeah, it's not te- like, I'm gonna tell you now, I kinda have the the rest of the month mapped out and it's gonna be a weird month. With a lot of variety, so I thought this would be a good one to ease in. Joe, the question, of course, is th- we're gonna do something different for October. It's we're gonna ask, do you recommend this movie? But also, would you recommend this movie for like, let's say, someone was doing a 31 movies of Halloween? Would you recommend this as a must-watch for their Halloween? Um, I certainly will recommend it. Um, but for a Halloween like horror movie thon. It's difficult um, because I think the movie's great. I just don't know if it's got enough to make it into like a horror movie marathon. Okay. Like that. It's just like I think there's much better choices, much more appropriate choices for a Halloween, you know, month long movie schedule. Yes. But that being said, I'd recommend this movie any time of year. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It's, it's just a really, really good movie. Like, if if you feel like you're in the, you know, if you want to watch something like a rear window, I, and, and there is a lot of connections with Hitchcock with this movie as well, um, that, that it, it's 
one of the inspirations for Psycho. Um, yeah, so if you watch, like, if you want to watch, like, a rear window, I would say watch this, too. It'd yes, be a great, I, like, double double feature. Yeah, I agree. I'm going to also pretty much agree with everything you said. I th- I definitely recommend this movie. Definitely a must-watch for any movie fan. Not just Criterion connoisseur, but movie fan in general. I have not seen the remake, so I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I, 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 that's another thing. Like, I, I feel like I should watch the remake and see what they can capture and, and what... Because I almost feel like they're going to push the horror movie elements a little more. Yeah. Um, but... We- we should do we should do like a spin off show. <laughs> we should do a spin off show of all of like it's like Criterion Connection, but just the remakes of them. Like Solaris, oh, like, so, Vanishing, yeah, Diabolic. And yeah. Diabolik, uh you know, Twelve Angry Men. Yeah. Like Solaris. Uh there's others, I think. But there's like a lot of remakes. I think we should do a spin off show we talk about the remakes. Um but yeah, for the Halloween <laughs> I don't know how many there are to necessarily ne- necessitate a show as a Godzilla. Um, yeah. <laughs> but we could we could do like bonus episodes or something and do that as like a treat. Like, hey, here's the remake. How does it stack up to the criteria? <laughs> yeah. Uh, as for Halloween, I agree. I don't think it's, it's in a must watch list, but it's like one of those things like. I wouldn't say you shouldn't do it, you know? But, yeah, I agree. I don't think it's a must-watch for Halloween, but, yeah, must-watch for any time of the year. Um, if you like people being drowned in bathtubs. Um, it's like this and what lies beneath. What a what a combo. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so what's your thoughts on Diabolique? Let us know in the comments section below if any other horror movies that you like or any movie suggestions that we should do. I know there's a lot of Criterion releases coming out. They have announced up to December. So if you have a suggestion, like, subscribe, and share. Check out our letterbox list. We have all of our movies that we've reviewed on there. So you can just like see, oh, let's see how many percentage of movies you've seen. And let's get you guys to 100% watched on these movies. So until next time, I'm Wade. And I'm still Joe. And we'll see you later.